A blessed evening, mga kapatid. Uh, alam niyo po, uh, honestly, uh, yung mga uh, nag, nag-offer po ng awitin nila sa Panginoon, uh, it, it really gives me so much joy. And I'm sure the Lord is also pleased with us. Uh, nga lang, hindi tayo kompleto ngayon because uh, of our limitations uh, dahil nga sa situation natin ngayon. However, hindi ba nakatuwa makita yung mga children natin nagpupuri sa Panginoon? Hindi ba, mga kapatid? Lalo ko sila na-miss. Na-miss ba sila, mga kapatid? No? Nakamiss ko sila. No? And also sila, Pastor Jim. Uh, ngayong gabi po, we are uh, everyone and uh, uh, most of the people in the world will be celebrating uh, one of the most important, perhaps, uh, part of the history of humanity, that is Christmas, right? And we're going to talk about the Christmas effect. Ano nga ba epekto ng Pasko, mga kapatid, sa buong mundo at sa atin? Um, this is one topic that is so close to my heart as well. So please forgive me if I become emotional as we go on with our study. A Savior is born. Yun po yung sabi sa Isaiah chapter 9. Yun po yung topic. Yun po yung diniscuss ni Prophet Isaiah, mga kapatid. Now, sabi dyan, particularly in verses 6 and 7, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of His government and of peace, there will be no end. And on the throne of David, over His kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the seal of the Lord, of hosts, will do this. Samahan niyo po ako mga kapatid sa isang Panalangin. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord God. For indeed, because of your grace and because of your love, because of who you are, Lord, we are celebrating Christmas. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. For indeed, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the very reason why we are rejoicing, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, as we have read your words, we ask, Holy Spirit, meet us, O Lord. Give us, O Lord, this new and refreshing truth that can only be coming from you, O Lord. I don't like to teach this according to my own knowledge because I don't have, O Lord. I don't like to teach this according to my wisdom because I am not wise, O Lord. So, uh, Holy Spirit, teach us tonight. Teach us, O Lord, what is Christmas really all about, O Lord? Break our hearts as we listen to you. Teach us, Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my rock, and my redeemer. Lord Jesus Christ, be glorified. Take your place. This is our prayer in your name. Lato tayo magsabi ng Amen. Ito pong Isaiah 9. This is a prophecy of a Savior for salvation for of His people given 700 years before He came. So, can you imagine po yung distance po, yung gap, 700 years. And, and brothers and sisters, gusto ko pong tingnan niyo, I hope all your Bibles are still open with me as because from time to time we are going there no? and, 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 and I'd like us to really all together Focus our attention to the word as we study together. No, no. Napansin niyo po yung verse 6. 
uh, pag tininan po natin mabuti yung verse 6, nakalagay po dyan parang past tense na po, no? Now, totoo po yan because it's in pre predictive past. And when we say predictive past, sinasabi po ngayon dito, it is described as if already happened. So, nung sinasabi po ni Prophet Isaiah to, describe niya po itong prophet so as if nangyari na po ito. Hello? And brothers and sisters, listen up. Nangyari na nga po ito. So, please take note, this emphasizes that this prophecy will surely happen. Wow! So dito pa lang, mga kapatid, sinasabi niya, I said, there's a promise. May promise, Panginoon. And, and hang on this. This will surely happen. And it really happened, brothers and sisters. Now, maybe the question here right now is that, why do we need a Savior? Bakit niya ba? Have you ever, have you ever asked yourselves, you know, uh, sa isang mabuti pong tao, <laughs> Ang question sa kanya, why do I need such? Tama po ba? I mean, kung ikaw, wala namang, if you are going to compare yourselves, if we are going to compare ourselves to, to, to those people who sobra po yung, yung, yung ginagawang crimes, pwede natin sabihin ngayon, I'm a good person, better than him. Right? Brothers and sisters, hindi po yun ang sinasabi dito. We need to understand that good must be taken in the right perspective. The word good. I'd like us, brothers and sisters, to know that we need to compare our good to God's good. Hello? When we say to ourselves, I'm a good person, hey, ba, kapatid, kaibigan, bago mo ipagpatuloy yan, ganito muna siguro ang tanong mo, yung bang kabutihan mo, kung ikaw compare natin sa kabutihan ng Diyos, will it reach His standard? Because the only standard for good is God Himself. So, pag ganun pa lang sinasabi natin, good, then, may sinasabi natin, ngayon pa lang, marirealize natin, may problem, mga kapatid. May problem. And, and every time that we hear God's good, it immediately draws our attention to His holiness, brothers and sisters. We need to realize that when we say God is good, he, we are also saying God is holy. And He alone is holy. Nobody in all His entire creation can claim that He is holy. Only God is holy. Now, we have got to look at this you nature of God and of nature of man. We have got to look at this, looking into the nature of God and our nature, brothers and sisters. You see, God has a plan and man is critical to that plan. We need to realize this, brothers and sisters. Mi plano po ang Dios. Why God created all these things is because God has planned. Ang malungkot dito, mga kapatid, critical po tayo dun sa plano ng Diyos na yon. Brothers and sisters, God is holy and He cannot abide sin. And man has sinned and, in, and is sinful and in sinful nature. Wow! I hope we are already getting the point. God, we are created by a holy God. And we are sinful. He has a plan. God has a plan. And brothers and sisters, man is so critical in that plan. Alam niyo po, natatanda niyo po ito. Jekyll and Hyde. Have you read this book? Or have you watched a movie pertaining to Jekyll and Hyde? Alam niyo po ito si Jekyll and Hyde. This is si Dr. Jekyll and si Hyde, si Mrs. Hyde. Alam niyo po, si Jekyll, right? 
Siya po yung good man. And then si hide inside that jekyll, right? Is that beast inside him. Deep inside this jekyll, the good person, hiding, lurking inside his heart and ready to pop out anytime. Si hide. Brothers and sisters, we are all in this condition. We are all in this condition. We have what we say good in us, but you see, we need also to admit there is also evil inside us. And that evil is ready to pop out anytime. Parang, you know, Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin that we are good because we are not holy and we are not perfect. Lahat po tayo nagkakamali. Tama po ba, mga kapatid? We are all can commit errors. We, 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 we commit faults in life. And, and, and here, guess what, brothers and sisters? Yung isang single na tingin natin na so mild and so minimal mistake and shortcoming and fault. Pero in the eyes of God, that is sin. And He cannot tolerate that. Because what? God is holy. He is holy. Parang ganito po, mga kapatid. Kahit po sobrang 1 to 20, 19 po yung babuti natin ginawa, and then yung 20, we fail. All those 90 is failure. Parang one rotten egg poisons the whole omelette of eight eggs. Tama po ba? Yung walong itlog, try nyo po magluto, i-omelette po ninyo, and isa lang po doon mailagay yung bulok na itlog, I'm telling you, the whole omelette is already poison. That's the point of Jekyll and Hyde. And that's the point of what we are going to study tonight. We are all in this condition, brothers and sisters. We are not perfect. We are not perfect. And every time na nami-mention po, we are not perfect, brothers, sisters, I do not look to others. I immediately look to myself. I immediately look to myself. I do not see your fault. I see my own faults. I do not see your shortcomings. I see my own shortcomings. Brothers and sisters, I do not see your need. I see my own need. Bakit po tayo hindi perfect? Sino po dito hindi nasasaktan ng kanyang mahal sa buhay? Meron po ba? Sometimes, Kahit po pigilan natin, napagtataasan po natin sila ng bosses, right? Do we like that? No. But we must admit that's wrong, right? And we say we love that person. Sometimes we say hurting words to them. Sometimes belittling them. Sometimes downing them. Sometimes to the point of condemning them. And we forget to see our own short comings and faults. See, brother, sister, the mere fact na mataasan mo na ng boses yan, it's already, it should lead you already to an admittance that I am not perfect. And I need help. I, we, we say things that we regret. Tama po ba? We say things that we regret. And sometimes, nagsasorry na tayo, here we go again. We say things again that we regret. These are simple things that I hope we see ourselves. We are not perfect. Kaya po, totoo po yung sabi ni Paul, and this time, this time I'd like to use po yung ERV. Sabi po ni Apostle Paul, I do not do the good that I want do, to do. 
I do the evil that I don't want to do. So, if I do what I don't want to do, then I am not really the one thing doing it. It is the sin living in me that does it. See, that's the point. We are all living in sin and we are sinful by nature. You see, God has a plan. It is perfect and He won't change His mind about executing it. Remember, our God, our Creator is a perfect being. Once He decided, that's it. That's final. Hey, He's perfect. He will change His mind and He will execute it. Now, His plan involves us humans. Though, and we are sinners through and through. So, since God is holy, he cannot tolerate the presence of sin and unless He somehow cleanses us, it is impossible for Him to work His eternal plan with us. That's the point. I think we need to realize this. Dahil po, present po ang kasalanan sa atin, hanggat hindi po siya ang kumilos para malinis po tayo, Magiging imposible po yung execution na yan ba? That is also that I'm looking here in man's perspective. However, if going to look at it in divine perspective, nothing can change and stop what God has already planned. Hindi po, mga kapatid, huwag niyo po sanang tingnan ng ating Lord na kaya po niya tayo create kasi may kulang siya, inadequate siya. Something is missing in his life. That's why he created us. No, brothers and sisters. He created his whole creation. All the more he created us in, the, in his own image. You know why? Because his plan is for him to display his glory and power through whom? Through us. Hallelujah. Because when God created me and you, that's his plan. To display his glory. However, because of sin, na-interrupt po yun, brothers and sisters. Those who are not cleansed, those who are not saved, must be separated from God for all eternity. And this is one great problem that we have. We are separated from God. If, we, if He will not save us, if He will not cleanse us, brothers and sisters, we will face His wrath for eternity. That is why this is the problem and why we need a Savior and salvation. And his solution, O Lord, he offered the perfect sacrifice once and for all to cleanse us of sin and reconcile us to himself. Thus, this he did with his son on the cross. Kaya po, mga kapatid, please remember this. Every time that you think of Christmas, you think of the cross. Every time that we celebrate Christmas, brothers and sisters, this is not something to really rejoice as in rejoicing. Why? Because we are saved, brothers and sisters. We are saved because Christ died for us on that cross. And Christmas means death also. Alam niyo po ba another meaning ng Christmas? Christmas is not about gift as we traditionally believe it, right? Christmas is about God's coming. Christ came first 2,000 years ago. And when He died on the cross, He was buried, resurrected, and while ascending, He promised He will return. Kaya po nasabi ko mga kapatid, 
Christmas is all about Christ coming. And every time that we come to a point in, in that festive mood of celebrating Christmas, brothers and sisters, please do not ever forget your Lord, your King will return for you. Hey, church, church, this is my question. Are you all ready for His return? Are we all ready for His return? Definitely, He will return. The question here is, are we ready? Are we ready? You see, church, we need a Savior because we cannot save ourselves. Amen? You please, in Amina, it says in 9, 6, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. All those things are attributes of our God. And that speaks, brothers and sisters, not just of the temporal kingdom which those people in his time were, was looking. They're just looking for temporal things, brothers and sisters. No. Dun po sa verse 7, ano sabi niya? And his reign will be forevermore. Alam niyo, tingin ng tao, temporal lang, sabi ng Lord, ang ikli lang tingin niyo. I am here to give you eternal kingdom. And that's why I am here. I am coming and I will be coming to establish that eternal kingdom and I will save my people. Why? Because my people cannot save themselves. We need the Savior for without Christ, we are described as having no hope and without God, in the world. Yun po yung sinasabing paulit-ulit natin pinag-aaralan sa Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. Brothers and sisters, we are all hopeless beings. And Christ gives us that hope. You see, brothers, sisters, in His love, God sent the Savior, His only begotten Son, so He could feed us for eternity and showcase His glory. Church, You are saved for eternity. You are not saved for temporal things. Church, listen up. Your image is to bear the glory of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not ever, ever be tempted to display this world's image. We have higher image to project. Brothers and sisters, kung ang pananaw mo is just projecting the world's image, ang baba ng pananaw mo, kapatid. What Christ offer is His own image. And I cannot think of a better image than bearing the image of my Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us are still praying for gifts and praying for best gifts to receive. Brother, sister, let me remind you, you already have received the best gift there is. Brother, sister, let me remind you, what God the Father has given us is the best gift that heaven can offer to us. And if He has given us the best there in heaven, ano pa ho bang inihintay ninyo, mga kapatid? Now it's time to rejoice. Now it's time to celebrate. Now it's time to be at peace and be contented. Brothers and sisters, by the way, 
the biblical meaning of contentment is not mediocrity. Marami po nagsasabing contentment. Pero pag tingin mo yung contentment, mediocrity, alam mo yung pwede na yan. Hindi po ganun ang sinasabi ng Bible. Ang tinuturo po ng Bible is this. Romans 8.28 For all things work together for good. For him that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Contentment in Bible is this. Whatever that we are into right now, you rejoice in that because God has a wonderful plan in you in that situation. And be contented with that. Nasusundan po ba natin yun? Brothers and sisters, Bible is saying this is not our home. Our home is there in heaven. Kaya po, with this reason, we can have comfort and joy. Now, open your Bibles with me. Let, let's turn our Bibles in Luke chapter 2. We will read reading. Verses 8 and 11. Kung po yung na, just say, Amen. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Allow me to read this with you in English Standard Version. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, ito po situation na ito, when our Lord Jesus Christ was born in 4 BC, alam mo, kung titingnan po natin, nandun po yung political turmoil and there is religious unrest at that time. Well, alam niyo po, hindi naman to iba dun po sa like, situation na Isaiah when he gave that prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Israel also was experiencing political turmoil and religious unrest rest at that time. You see, prophecy about the Savior was given the same situation and this time the fulfillment of that prophecy is fulfilled in the same situation. This is a period of revolution and violence. Kaya pag titignan niyo po ang church history, yan po makikita niyo. When our Lord Jesus Christ was born, and this was a critical moment in political and religious history. When King Herod the Great died, alam niyo po, marami pong nagnais agad mumupudo sa kanyang seat, sa kanyang throne. Kaya apo ganit po ang situation. Now, the time of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ was a very difficult and hard time time in the point of history. Brothers, sisters, tonight we will be celebrating the eve of Christmas, right? Madali lang po ba ang times natin? No. It's the same thing with the time when our Lord Jesus Christ was born. In fact, brothers and sisters, it's harder than in those times. Now, in verse 1, pansin niyo po, in the same chapter, si Caesar Augustus, nag-order po siya ng census. Now, ito pong census na ito, mga kapatid, ang purpose lang nito is taxation. He'd like to tax all citizens sa Roman Empire, brothers and sisters. That is why, because of this, na-force po yung mga nakatira po sa ibang bayan, 
na bumalik po at mabalik bayan. Now, this time, we see the story about Joseph and Mary. Nasusundan na po natin, mga kapatid? Now, here, because of this order, Joseph and Mary traveled 130 kilometers from Nazareth to Bethlehem. This is a four to six days travel by foot or a three day ride. Brother, sister, if you carefully go back to the accounts of the Bible pertaining to this account, Nowhere we can find that Mary is riding a donkey. Yan po yung ating nakagustan, right? Now you go back to the Bible and read again Matthew and Luke. You will find out there that there was no mention that Mary was riding a donkey. So our guess is this. They might travel by foot. And this is a four to six day travel, brothers and sisters. Ako po ngayon ay nagbabike. Yung 20 kilometers bike, hindi po ganun kasarap. Kasi po dito po sa Antipolo, up and down, up and down. Sa mga nagbabike po, mag test po sila sa akin dito. This is just 20 kilometers. How many kilometers po ang nilakad po nila? 130 kilometers. Now, pwede po siyang donkey. Tama po ba? Masarap po kaya sakyan itong donkey? Pwede po siyang by horse. Masarap po kaya sakyan ng horse? Remember, Three days travel by ride. And most likely, Joseph and Mary also traveled by caravan. Why? Because going back, yung mga, alam niyo po, yung, yung daan noon at daan noon, very different ang situation and condition. You know why? Because nandun po ang presence ng robbers, robbers and thieves and bandits. Now, if Joseph and Mary will just travel by themselves, guess what? They will be vulnerable to bandits, robbers, and thieves. Tama po ba? So, most likely, Joseph and Mary traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem going with caravan. However, still, this is the point. Is it going to be a comfortable travel? Remember, Mary was pregnant and was about to give birth at that time. Alam niyo po, yung magbike po ng 20 kilometers, nakakangawit po, masakit sa saddle. Yung mga professionals po, they are riding 200 kilometers. Pero bago po sila nakarating doon, masasakit po yun po ang saddle nila, right? But please, consider the condition of Mary. Yung pong mga nganak ka, dun po sa mga mother na nanganak, you know the experience, right? Pagkakbo po kayo, mga kapatid, as due month nyo na, I'm telling you, kahit po sa sakyan, ayaw nyo sumakay, right? Mahirap. Now, when they arrived, Bethlehem, and she was about to give birth, brothers and sisters. Madale? No. Mary gave birth to lower room. Bakit po lower room? Remember, San Humu we see Joseph. Sa Bethlehem, hometown niya. And please take note, meron po siyang relatives doon. Hey, hey, church, listen up. Dahil po maraming umuwi, Nagbalik bayan, naubusan po si Mary at Joseph ng guest room. Yung guest room po dito, yung po yung inn. This is a different inn. Inn used by, by our Lord in His parable, the Good Samaritan. Remember? 
The Good Samaritan, yung in po doon, nagbayad po yung Good Samaritan, right? That's a different in. This in speaks of guest chamber. Guest rooms. Dahil po puno na yung bahay, ano nangyari? Si Mary, si Joseph, doon po sa lower room. At yung po mga tsura ng mga bahay noon, yung second floor, doon po yung comforts, doon po sa baba, doon po nagsishelter ang mga hayop. San po nang anak si Mary? Sa lower room. Remember po, it's the same inn that our Lord Jesus Christ used when He requested for an upper room. Remember now this? In the Lord's Supper. Did Jesus Christ pay for something? No. The host offered it to Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, became the host for that supper. Nasusundan natin ngayon? Brothers, sisters, when our Lord was born, He was born in a stone animal feeding throne. In tradition po natin, kahoy, right? Remember that time, sa culture po nila, bihira pa ho ang kahoy, more of stone. Kaya po yung manger na yan, kainan po ng hayop yan. Kung saan po kumakain ang hayop, dun po inilapag ang ating Lord, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, no hospital there, no clinic there, no maternity in there, no clean and comfortable room there, no safe place there, no nursery room there, no clean clothes there, no sanitized and clean room with nurses and doctors to attend there, no nothing but animals and the lower room and this feeding throat. Brothers and sisters, the Creator, just like a created being. The owner, master, be a servant. The ruler, judge, will receive the judgment and penalty, of course, of the curse of sin. And sabi sa Philippians 2, 5 and 8, Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, through, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. By all nature, by all attributes, this baby is God. And verse 7, he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Brothers, sisters, I know we do not fully recognize and understand this. Pero gusto ko pong dali na attention nyo dito mga kapatid. Para lalo nyo po maintindihan to at kung ano po naramdaman ng ating Lord Jesus Christ who is the creator, the master, the ruler, the owner, the king. Be a cockroach. You'd like to be cockroach? Our Lord Jesus Christ became cockroach. The Lord God, Jesus Christ, became just like a wretched, hopeless, condemned, and dying man. This holy God became a cockroach. Nobody among us here would wish to be a cockroach, right? In fact, we dread to be in cockroach presence. Iba nga sa atin, kahit macho na, pagka nandyan ang cockroach, napapatalon pa. 
Alam po yung unang pumapasok sa atin sa cockroach. It is filthy and dirty. Brothers, sisters, listen up. Yung Diyos po natin, tinanggap niya po yung maging cockroach. He did this. That's how low it was. So kaya po mga kapatid, I'd like us to remember the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was not cute. It was messy. It was messy. But this is the assurance and guarantee of His promised return. Gano po ako nakakasiguradong babalik ang Diyos, ang Lord Jesus Christ? He came first. And when He promised, I'm sure He will do it again. This time, I will be enjoying with His glory and power. Because of myself? Because I'm good? No. Because of Jesus Christ. Christmas should always remind us that the Lord Jesus Christ will return. And it's going to be with His full glory and fury. Remember, brothers and sisters, this time, ano sabi na sa Matthew 16, 27, for the Son of Man is going to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay each person according to what He has done. Bakit po ganun ka-importante po yung Son of Man Brothers and sisters, because ito po ang sinabi sa prophecies in Daniel 7, 13, and 14. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days. And what was presented before him, brothers and sisters, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. And His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And His kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. And guess what, brothers and sisters? That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Church, the Lord Jesus Christ came to serve. And He commanded His followers to serve as He did. In Matthew 20, 25, and 27, but Jesus called them to him and said, Tignan niyo po, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them? It shall not be among you, but whoever would be great among you, you must be your servant. Also in verse 27 and 20, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life ransom for many. And the same thing, yan din po ang sabi sa Luke 22, 25 to 27. Doon na lang po tayo sa verse 26, tingnan niyo po. But not so with you, rather let the greatest among you become as the youngest, meaning the least. The leader as one who serves. And then, Sami just verse 27. For you is greater, one who reclines at the table or one who serves. Here goes, is it not the one who reclines at the table? Ano sabi ng Lord? But I am among you as the one who serves. 
brother, sister, I hope Christmas also reminds us that we are all servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is Christmas effect? Well, it's comfort and joy to those who are in Christ Jesus. Tapikin mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, you should be rejoicing because of Jesus Christ. Kaya po yun po yung sabi, mga kapatid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be far for all the people. For unto you is born to this in the city of David, a Savior is Christ the Lord. This is now the fulfillment of Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. The angel is now saying, Hey, do not be afraid. Behold, sabi the angel, listen, listen up. This is good news for you. And when you say good news, brothers and sisters, it comes with great, exceeding joy. Nakikita ko nga po sa inyo, itsura, Christmas, you have exceeding joy right now. Alam niyo sinasabi na angel dito, Hey, alam mo ba itong balita ko bibigay sa'yo? Ito na ang magsasatisfy sa'yo. This is the answer. This is the good news. Sinabi ng Lord, sinabi ng angels, the Lord Jesus Christ has come. And He will give us calmness amidst troubles and satisfies the emptiness of our lives. Kaya po tutu po yung sinabi nila Pastor Ron, nila Pastor Richard, Pastor Jabez. Ang totoo po mga Kristiyano, kahit po amidst of any trouble, they can still find calmness within. They are still at peace. You know why? Because Jesus is in their lives. Jesus, He is the answer to our deepest needs. Amen? He is the quench to our drying thirst. Amen? He is the fill to our greatest hunger. Amen? He is the rest to our restless heart and minds, brothers and sisters. He is that need of all our needs. Kaya po, mga kapatid, itong Christmas, kaya po siya comfort and joy, Mga kapatid, sana po naintindihan natin, Christmas tells us that God has not forsaken us. Amen. Hallelujah. Mga kapatid, hindi tayo forsaken. It is the greatest comfort and the joy-producing thought that in our hopelessness and helplessness, God has not forsaken us. Kaya po ang isang tunay na anak ng Diyos naglululundag sa saya dahil nare-realize siya, hindi ako pinabayaan ng Diyos ko. And if God saved me from my sins, and if God saved me from His condemnation and the judgment and His wrath, will He not save me from my problems? Will He not save me from my own self? He will. He will. He will. Second, brothers and sisters, I need, need us to understand. Christmas tells that God is good. Amen? Christmas it tells us God is good. Hey, God is perfectly good. Alam niyo po, excited po ako dito. My God is perfectly good. God is goodness and that goodness is God. Alam niyo po ibig sabihin nito mga kapatid? No evil, no harm, no pain ang plano niya to each and every child of His. Wala po siyang pinaplanong masama para po sa kanyang mga tao because He is perfectly good. There's no evil in our God. He will not think of any evil against us, brothers and sisters. What He thinks of each of us is only for our good. Why? Because God is goodness 
And that goodness is God. And let us not fail to acknowledge this. Brothers and sisters, as we go home, as we depart this place, do not forget these words of the Lord. He is good. Our God is good. The Lord Jesus Christ will save his people from the guilt of their sins. He is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Savior, the Lord. Alam niyo po ba talaga kung anong greatest problem natin? It's not about money. It's not about lack of possession or wealth. You know what's our greatest problem? Sin and the guilt of our sin. That's our greatest problem. And the Lord Jesus Christ save us from that problem. The third point that I'd like to share with you about Christmas is this. Christmas tells that God in Christ mediated. Brothers and sisters, ano sabi ko kanina? We cannot save ourselves. Amen? We cannot. God is the one who initiated and saved us. Without His working, we will not be saved. Kaya po, the Lord Jesus Christ is the joy-producing power. Kahit po ang isang tunay na Kristiyano lubog na sa problema, that person can still find joy within him. You know why? Because he decides in his heart and he knows in his heart that Jesus is in him. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. As sabi niya di Paul sa following verses, I do not become anxious about anything, but in anything by prayer and supplication, I give my prayers to God. And on promise, and the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. In whom? In Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, He is the glad news. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the glad news. If our Lord Jesus Christ had not come 2,000 plus years ago, we have no good news yet. The reason why we are all here, brothers and sisters, and we sing songs and we offer songs to the Lord, we sing joy to the world, and we sing... Mm, And we sing Silent Night, and we sing, and we sing uh, uh, Away in a Manger, and we sing all those Christmas songs. You know why? Because Jesus Christ, we have already received the glad news. Brothers and sisters, I hope when you, when you, when you leave this place and come out of this room, hindi po masukat ang joy sa inyong heart. You see, God intended, initiated, manifested, completed, meaning to say He rested and resurrected, provided and promised another helper and seal, Holy Spirit and His return for His people. Ano pa ba ang hihingi natin, mga kapatid? Wala na po. This is my question. What are we chasing in life? What's battling for our heart? No, no, no. Friend, brother, sister, anong hinahabol ng buhay mo? What, what are you chasing? Hey, hey, sino yung naglalaban dito sa puso mo? What's battling for our heart? Is it money, business, career, study, passion, hobbies? Is it movies? Is it clothes? Career? Is it relationships, etc., 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 etc.? What's what's battling in our hearts, brothers and sisters? 
You see, if you are not chasing Jesus Christ, you are chasing death. Hello? If you are chasing, if you are not chasing Jesus Christ, you are chasing death. Again, let me remind all of you, Christmas is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is comfort and joy to those who have relationship with Him. Before we end in prayer, I'd like to ask again the praise and worship team. Can we sing this song prayerfully and worshipfully and really alam niyo po yung meaning every single word lyric of this song let's make this as our prayer brothers and sisters
Shall we all stand? Let us pray. Panginoon, ang buti mo. Ang buti mo po sa amin. Buti-buti mo po sa amin, O Diyos. Sino ba kami, Panginoon? Ang buti mo po sa amin, O Diyos. Ang buti mo po sa amin. Panginoon, patawarin mo po kami kasi minsan, Panginoon, lagi kami sa sarili namin nakatingin, Panginoon. Kalimutan namin, O Diyos, na ang problema nga ay ang sarili namin, Panginoon. Thank you for saving us, O Lord. Panginoon, hindi po sapat ang salamat para sabihin salamat po sa iyo, Panginoon. Pero salamat po, O oh Diyos. Hindi po masukat, Panginoon, ang pagmamahal mo sa amin. Hindi po kahit kailan maiintindihan namin ito, O oh Diyos. Salamat. Because, Lord, tonight, Pinaalala mo po sa amin, Panginoon, that we have all and every reason to be rejoicing, Lord God. Because of you, our Lord Jesus Christ. E eh, ano naman, Panginoon, kung wala kaming handa, kung tinapay lamang o tubig, kung wala ho kami mapagsasaluhan ngayong gabi. Panginoon, ang importante sa amin, kasama ka namin, O Diyos. Nahaway itong gabi na ito, kapag nagsama-sama po kami mga pamilya, ito na ngang may parangdam at may pakita namin, nasa sa amin na po ang lahat ng dahilan para maging masaya. We have already received the best gift in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for being that gift. May this Christmas, O oh Lord, and the coming year be truly one that is so affected by Christmas in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Asking once again that you bless each and every one of us spiritually, physically, and materially, Lord. We are your children. This is not for our own sake, but this is for your name's sake, for your glory's sake, and for your kingdom's sake. Bigay mo po sa amin ang iyong mayamang bendisyon, ang mayamang pag-ibig ng Diyos Ama. Mayamang grasya sa Panginoon sa Kristo at mayamang pakikipisa ng malal na spirito tatlong persona sa isang Diyos na pasating ngayong bukas at magpakailan, kailan pa man. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas po, mga kapatid.